Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, great to be with you today. We're in Acts chapter 19, verse 26. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 19, verse 26, and we'll jump into um, what God has for us today. Father, thank you that every day we can look to you and that our hearts can be open and receptive, and, and when they are, God, you speak. And so here we are, we pray, please speak to our hearts in Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Bible says, and you see in here that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. Now, I know you're thinking, who's talking right now? Because that for sure is not Luke. And it obviously is not Paul. Um, it is Demetrius the, the silversmith. And, and there's some chaos going down in Ephesus. That's kind of where we pick the story up. And Ephesus, of course, I've said this before, um, it, was a, it was in that era kind of like a modern-day Mecca for the worship of false gods. One particular god was Artemis or Diana, um, called Diana of the Ephesians. And very big city, a very sophisticated city, um, well-traveled. Uh, people would come from all over the world just to, just to worship this false goddess. In fact, there was a temple that was uh, built and um, thousands of temple prostitutes would, um, you know, part of the practice of worshiping this false goddess was consummating sexual relationships. And so, I mean, it was super decadent, very immoral, um, and it had spread throughout the world. Connected to this was the money-making machine. And so in Ephesus, you had authorized idol makers that were um, taking their trade and they were making idols and they were distributing them across the known world. And they were making hand over fist. I mean, they were making bank. Problem, Paul comes in, he's preaching the gospel, and he's saying this, and this is what Demetrius says. He's right in this regard. He's like, hey, these gods that are made with hands are not gods, right? So, hey, you guys are all engaged and involved in something uh, that is totally useless because these images that are made out of wood and silver and gold and things like that are not gods. There's only one true God that's worthy of your worship. And so there was this cultural shift, huge cultural shift when people put their faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this monotheistic God. They turned away from the worship of these false gods. They turned away from their polytheism. Well, obviously you can tell the result of that was this revenue stream dried up. People stopped buying these images because they began to realize, hey, why, why, am, I gonna, why am I gonna spend money on something that is an offense to God and you know isn't really a God in the first place? And so Demetrius, because he's losing out on money and his whole guild is losing out on money, they start this big riot in Ephesus and um, they turn against the Christians. And I think, you know, you read the story and it's, um, it's probably easy to just be disconnected and to think, well, you know, I mean, false gods, polytheism, God's made of um, all of these different materials, just really not relevant today because that's not what we deal with in our culture. But every culture has gods. Every culture has gods. You know, for Ephesus, it was Artemis. For Lystra, you remember the city that Paul uh, was stoned to death in, it was Zeus and Hermes. And for America, it is, and that's your homework today. I want you to think about this. What are the cultural gods uh, in America? What are the things that you see people surrendering their life to, bowing down before, um, orienting themselves around, um, giving their worship to, what does that mean? Placing at the highest value in their life. What you worship is the thing that you give highest 
value to in your life. It sits above everything else. I want you to think about that today. I'm going to give you one. I think identity um, is one of the gods of our culture. Uh, and, and by that, I simply mean this, like the ethic today in our uh, society is um, be who you want to be. You know, that's the ethic in our society. Really, the God that's valued in that regard is the God of self. And so, and so the encouragement is, well, whatever you feel, whatever you desire, um, it's, if it's good for you, then do it, then be it. Like the terminology we may use is something like, hey, you do you, boo. That's, that's the way we kind of phrase this modern ethic. Um, and so we really, I think, have, uh, we've put ourselves in a place where identity is something that, that we worship and the freedom to be whatever you want to be. And then, you know, when the Christian message is shared that really God has shaped our identity to be image bearers, and it's not all about us, the culture militates pretty aggressively against it. Anyway, think about that today. And then ask yourself the question, you know, are you worshiping any of the cultural gods that are esteemed in our society? And if so, uh, how are you going to handle that? What are you going to do about it? God bless you. I hope that uh, God really ministers to your heart today. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.